Good morning, sir. Good morning. My name is Mike Barnett. I'm looking for the pro. I'm supposed to meet him here. Are you uh, a member, sir? No, I'm not. Uh. <laughs> I took some lessons from Mr. Boardman in Sea Island last winter. Yes, sir. I was called back here, and uh, Mr. Boardman said I could finish the lessons up here. Oh. He phoned and said he could take me around in the mornings early before the members were on the links. Does the Board of Governors know this, sir? If you'll tell me where I can find Mr. Boardman, we'll ask him, shall we? Members. Good morning, miss. Good morning, sir. Don't worry about me. I'll just wait. Hello, Jonesy. Morning, Jonesy. Cup of coffee, Jonesy. Uh, yes, sir. Going around this morning, sir? You bet. And brew some magic in it, will you? I'm going to have to kill a few eagles. How about you? No point in sulking. I'm not sulking. If you want to know, I'm sore. I gather that. But look, we came out here to play golf. Let's discuss the other thing later. Let's discuss it right now. Why don't you go get dressed, honey? When I'm ready, Uncle. Or have you an order from the court saying I can't do that either? You've got one for everything else. My allowance, my bank account, my friends. Uh, my niece will have one. Uh, you treat me like a child. You're acting like one. I'm old enough to pick my own friends and old enough to marry one of them too if I want to. I'm 19 years old and this. Yes, 19. And until you're 21, you'll do just as I say. After that, you can marry any fortune hunter you like. But I can tell you this, you won't be Mrs. Ted Borden as long as I'm your guardian. I'll see you on the links. Did you hear what I said? I heard you. You said as long as I'm your guardian. Hey, I'm sorry, Mr. Barnett. I didn't know what time it was. I would have met you at the gate. They almost made me use the servant's entrance. Swanky bunch of people you work for. What do you teach them, an overlapping grip with a lifted pinky? <laughs> you don't teach these people anything. You respectfully suggest. Well, I came up here for a respectful suggestion about a slice I've developed since I saw you in Sea Island last winter. I spent more time in the woods than a forest ranger. <laughs> well, that's why I asked you to get up here before the members come out. Oh, I'm allowed to give lessons on the outside, but, well, I'm still a hired hand, and the club has first whack at my, uh, talents. You mean I came all the way up here for a rain check? No, no. Uh, one of the members had me booked, and this is the only time he could play. Well, I'm not exactly a man of unlimited leisure myself. Well, I, I didn't mean that, Mr. Barnett. Uh, I thought you might join us, make it a threesome. I'll watch your game, give you a few pointers, and it won't count as a lesson. You'll still have two lessons coming. How about it? But if you've got a pupil... Mm -hmm. This guy's not a pupil. He's an opponent. We're playing for money. I get it, and I'll be the caddy for your loot. Is that against the rules? What, gambling with the help? Sure, but you gotta pick up that extra buck. Anyway, they ask for it. Makes them feel like tournament players going against a pro. I don't think I could stand to watch that happen to a guy 18 times. <laughs> He's not too bad himself. He only owes me 2,200 for the season. Is that all? Mm-hmm. Here, try one. And today we're playing a double or nothing. 4,400 bucks? Wow! You ever hit a sand trap, you need a bodyguard. I'm playing Victor Barstow. He's a good golfer, but a bad loser. I'd appreciate your coming along as a referee. I can't afford to lose $4,400. That Barstow can? Yeah, but it would kill him to lose to me. Why? He hates my insides. You look as if you could take care of yourself. If I ever teed off on him, I'd kill him. I think that's what he wants me to do. What, kill him? No, hit him. Look, Mr. Barnett, he knows I want this job. He could turn me in for, for playing for money with the other members, but he's a big loser himself, and it wouldn't look sporting. But he knows I'd be canned in a minute if I ever laid a hand on him. You mean he's deliberately steaming you up? I mean this, Mr. Barnett, that if you'd come along to protect him, you'd also be protecting me. Ted, oh, Ted. Excuse me a minute. Hello, darling. Hello. Oh, oh Ted, I'm worried. He's in a... Mr. Barnett, can you join us a minute? 
Mr. Barnett, this is Ellen Barstow. How do you do? How this do you is do Mike Barnett Barstow? from New York. It's her uncle I'm playing with today. Uh, I've asked Mr. Barnett to join us. Oh, would you, Mr. Barnett? I, I don't know if Ted has told you anything, but I'd be awfully grateful if you'd just go along. I'd even offered to correct Mr. Barnett's slice for free. That's pretty big for a fortune hunter like me. That's what our uncle calls me. Well, under the circumstances, maybe I'd better. I mean, I might learn something. Oh. When do we start? Ellen? Right now. I thought you were out on the course. I'm going now. I'm going to play the back nine. I'll see you in the clubhouse for lunch. Okay, hon. Good shooting. Thanks. Nice to have met you, Mr. Barnett. She's having lunch with me. We'll talk about that later. Oh, Mr. Barstow, this is Mike Barnett. I've asked him to play with us this morning. You're not a member. You a friend of Boardman's? I took some lessons from him down at Sea Island last winter. I don't want to horn in. Uh, you can add, can't you? I think so. Okay, you could keep score. This is one game where I want a witness, and maybe I can give you a few lessons myself. I hope you don't mind the caddy cart. The kids don't get out until nine. Club pampers the help. Caddies keep bankers' hours. Bankers have to push their own sticks. If you two sharks don't mind, I'll take the honor. Probably be the only time I'll have it all day. Go ahead, son. It's not your money I'm after. There's a lesson for you, Mr. Barnett. When there's dew on the grass, the greens are slow. Just give me a four on this hole, Barnett. And a big fat five for me. What do you know about that? The green was wet. What do you say, Barnett? Shall we concede it? Sure. Don't be so big hearted. You had a six, you know. It's my honor. Where to go? I lost it right by the woods. That's just why I went in the woods. Good distance, but I'm afraid you picked up my slice. There's a hook you can have, too. I'm way off the fairway, off to the left. I think you'll need your bathing suit to play that one. Pro. That's why my slice went. You got it. Slicing is from pressing too much. Isn't it, Mr. Pro? So I sliced. I'll be out of those woods before you ever will. Well, I'm off here. What do I use if I'm in water? A depth charge? When you're in trouble, blast. What do you mean? Use your sand wedge.
back, Boardman. Is he dead, Mr. Barnett? Hole in one. Hand it over. Anything you want to say? Let's go up the clubhouse. Not bad. But one year in office, I heard. Hasn't been a first degree in this district in eight years. I get it. And it's airtight. You know, a man could travel to Albany on that. Say that for me, Herb. My wife's keeping a scrapbook. Oh, come in, Mr. Barnett. Here's our star witness. Well, are you comfortable? The state treating you all right? You ever stayed at the commercial house? I bet they gave Boardman a softer bed over at the county jail. I'm afraid the state's got a less comfortable piece of furniture lined up for Mr. Boardman. Got a sure case, huh? This kind. Does it seem strange to you, Mr. Havemeyer, that since Barstow was killed, Boardman has never once made a statement? What could he say? If he opens his mouth, he's committing suicide. You ought to know that. After all, you're the one who caught him in the hen house with his hands full of feathers. Oh, the reason I ask you to stop by, uh, since the inquest, has the defense been in touch with you in any way? No, nope, haven't been near me. Still figures, Herb. It's their privilege, you know. But they've been avoiding all the other witnesses, too, and they've just barely looked at the evidence. You know why? Just a guess. They're not going to try to fight facts. They're going to let you throw the punches, and they're going to roll with them. And when your tongue's hanging out, they're going to step on it. Surprise change of plea, not guilty by reason of insanity. <laughs> you should have been a lawyer, Mr. Barnett. As a matter of fact, they've got a Dr. Winkler in town now. I think he's their surprise punch. You ever hear of him? Winkler? No, I don't think so. Well, doesn't matter, because I got a little counterpunch all ready for him. Now, the defense doesn't know this, but I've got two psychiatrists stashed over at my brother's house. They both examined Boardman, and no matter what this Dr. Winkler says, they can testify that he was and is just as sane as Judge Davis. Well, as you say, Mr. Havelier, I'm no lawyer. But the defense counsel is, and a good one. Hmm. That Leonard fellow from New York? Well, no offense, Mr. Barnett, but Boardman is foolish to face a jury of Hale County farmers with a downstate lawyer. Have you ever seen him in action? Well, I have, and that downstate lawyer could get an acquittal for John Wilkes Booth. Yeah, well, you just let us worry about the strategy. Then you admit, Miss Barstow, that you and your uncle had many quarrels over the attentions paid to you by the defendant? Yes. Well, I don't think the jury heard that. Yes. As your legal guardian, did your uncle have the authority to withhold your inheritance if you married without his consent before the age of 21? He did. But in the event of his death before that, what would happen to the money? It um, would revert to my complete control on my 19th birthday. How old are you, Miss Barstow? 19. Thank you, Miss Barstow. And from what you could overhear, Mr. Barnett, what was Miss Barstow's reply? She said, uh, I heard you as long as you're my guardian. And did she repeat any of this to Mr. Boardman? She met Mr. Boardman outside while we were on the practice green. I have no knowledge of what she said to him. Mm -hmm. But she did speak to him. And after that, what was his manner? He seemed upset, more so than before. And then you asked Mr. Boardman, just before he and Mr. Barstow went into the woods, how you should get out of a difficult position. And what did he say? He said, whenever you're in trouble, blast. He was less than a foot from the body, and he was holding a pistol from which only one shot had been fired. Could you identify this pistol? It was an Ariba, a Spanish gun, 6.35. It corresponds to our 25 caliber. The serial number was 14-14-55. Is this the gun? Yeah. 
It is. And now, Mr. Coroner, will you identify the exhibit that you have in your hand? This is the bullet that I removed from the body of Victor Barstow. I submit this in evidence. It was fired at close range from a 25 caliber pistol. The prisoner wouldn't admit uh, ownership of the gun, but we checked and found that a permit had been issued to uh, purchase and carry a weapon of that serial number. And to whom was it issued? Theodore Boardman. Theodore Boardman, the state has established intent, method, motive, and opportunity. Four accusing fingers of indisputable evidence, and they point directly at you. Can you deny any of it? The defendant does not have to answer that. He has already pleaded not guilty. That's all right, Your Honor. I don't deny anything. That is all. The counselor from New York may have the witness. Your witness, Mr. Leonard. The defense waves all right of cross-examination. The defense also excuses the witness. Your Honor, gentlemen of the jury, the uh, distinguished prosecutor of uh, Hale County has presented you with some hard facts, incontrovertible, immutable facts. We don't dispute them. We accept every single one of them, and we want you to accept them, too. But a true verdict must be based on all the facts. If only one fact is missing, Justice can miscarry. We wouldn't want that to happen, would we? Call Dr. Ernst Winkler to the stand. Dr. Ernst Winkler. Here it comes. When do we spring our doctors? The whole truth they in the hall the outside? So help you God? I do. Dr. Winkler, you are not a medical man, are you? No, sir, I am not. I received my doctorate in physics at Leipzig University in 1922. And uh, what do you do now, Doctor? For the last 12 years, I have been head of the ballistics laboratory for the International Police Organization in Geneva. And ballistics includes, among other things, the science of firearms identification, does it not? That is correct. On the 12th of this month, you were permitted to examine a certain bullet, Exhibit A. You also fired a test bullet from this pistol, Exhibit B. After scientific tests, the record of which I submit, what uh, conclusion did you arrive at, Doctor? That this bullet was not fired from this gun. The defense rests. Well, it's you. You come to laugh at the hayseed lawyer who was going to tie the can on the downstate slicker? Well, I deserved it. You won't believe it, but I think you made a good case. <laughs> Thanks. The only trouble is I got the wrong defendant. I suppose you think it was the girl. Look, when an innocent man won't defend himself, he's shielding someone. She had as much motive as he did. Only she didn't do it. How do you know? I was there, remember? From where I was in the fairway, I had a clear view of the woods. If she'd gone in there, I'd have seen her. Uh -uh, you were right the first time. Boardman? <laughs> well, I haven't got a case. Leonard knew that. That's why he went to trial. But why? He could have had the indictment tossed right in my face. Now he had to get Boardman tried so he could get him acquitted for lack of evidence. If the judge throws your case out tomorrow, Boardman's free and he can't be tried again for the same charge. Double jeopardy. Oh, if I'd only had that gun tested. If it's any comfort to you, Leonard made the same mistake you did. What do you mean? He got overconfident. He rested his case instead of moving for dismissal. The judge gave you 16 hours to get a conviction. Yeah, 16 hours to get out of town is what it sounded like. You may not be so far out of town. Huh? Maybe just about as far as the golf course. I don't get you. I still think the answer is out there somewhere. You want to come with me? Well, where are you going? You had to run for office, didn't you? A little walk won't hurt you. Give me a club scorecard, will you, Sonny? Yes, sir. Warner County, sir? 
Good idea. We may need a witness. But where are your clubs? We're going to play this round with a pencil. You got one? What are you going to do? I got an idea that Barstow's last game of golf was very well planned. If I can just recall the game hole by hole, we may know what the score really was. All right, what happened here? Barstow took a one putt for a four. I took a five. Boardman took a miserable six. Huh? He must have been using your pencil for a putter. He's a four three hole. Yeah, he's a professional. He's used to playing the course every day. How would a man who usually plays the first six and three under par suddenly go three over par? The easiest hole in the course. I don't know, unless he did it deliberately. But why would he want to lose the hole? Maybe he wanted to give Barstow the honor. Maybe he wanted to let his victim take the first shot off the next tee. The eighth? Well, that's the last hole Barstow ever played. Wasn't this where Barstow shot into the trees? Yeah. And if Boardman noticed his consistent slice, he must have known he would. But just to make sure, he gave Barstow the honor. Yeah, from here to those woods, that's a bad slice. It is. And for a top-flight golfer like Boardman to make one, it'd have to be intentional. What about you? Well, I made it easy for him. I hooked way off to the left into the water. That put Barstow and Boardman in the rough with no witness. Wasn't he taking a risk having you along at all? Why did he do that? What he needed was a material witness, not an eyewitness. Somebody who'd give you enough circumstantial evidence to convince you you had a case without bothering to do what we're going to do now. Which is what? Search those woods. the police search these woods. Yeah, but they didn't know what they were looking for. Well, what are we looking for? A couple of things. Now, let's see, as I recall, Boardman's ball landed about here. From where I was over there, I watched him chop his way out. Then I heard a pistol shot, and I came over here and saw Barstow laying dead, Boardman standing over him with a pistol hand. Which pistol, if you recall, had nothing to do with Barstow's death? He could have carried two pistols in here, one to kill Barstow, and the other with an exploded cartridge in it for me to find. Yeah. What would he do with it? If he'd have thrown it away, the police would have found it. He didn't have time to bury it before you got here. Why not? He had the perfect tool. What? A sand wedge. When you blast out of a lie like this, you dig a divot the size of a toupee. So? So any conscientious golfer always replaces a divot. That way the turf can take root again. And after a while, you'd never know it had been removed unless... Unless what? And the same kind that Boardman had. A divot makes a hole. A hole's a handy thing to have when you want to hide that extra pistol with the incriminating barrel marks and personal fingerprints that DAs love so well. I better have this photograph before I move it. Son, I want you to go over to the club, call the courthouse, ask the assistant to... Son, I said... Hey! Mr. Barnett, what are you looking for? It's okay, I found it. Mike Barnett, private investigator, duly licensed by the sovereign state of New York. If you tune in on this same channel next week at the same time, you'll see another exciting case reenacted from my private files. Many of the situations have been fictionalized, but what you will witness will be portrayed substantially as it happened and acted on the spot where it happened. You'll witness what occurred in each case when I was assigned to follow that man.